One day, the movies will doubtless get around to filming the fabulous life of Eleanor Medill Patterson, Collier's Weekly Magazine ventured in November 1946. Earlier that fall, Eleanor Medill Patterson had been selected to fill the void left by the recent death of her brother, Joseph Medill Patterson, as chairman of the board of the New York Daily News. After launching the Daily News in 1919, Joe Patterson had made it not only the United States' first viable tabloid, but the newspaper with the largest daily circulation of any tabloid or broadsheet in the nation, and the widest Sunday circulation of any in the world. The choice of the late publisher's sister had not been an exclusively sentimental one. In her own right, Eleanor Medill Patterson was already owner and publisher of the most widely read daily in the nation's capital, the Washington Times-Herald, called by many, both inside and out of the profession, the damnedest newspaper ever to hit the streets. According to popular journalistic axiom, the Pattersons had printer's ink blood. Their grandfather, the firebrand abolitionist Joseph Medill, had been editor-in-chief and eventual principal owner of the Chicago Tribune from the tense years immediately preceding the Civil War until his death in 1899. Eleanor Medill Patterson, as both the youngest and the only girl of her generation among fractious boys, had been her grandfather's darling. As such, she had inherited a disproportionate share of Tribune Company stock and a considerable fortune. Bypassing Eleanor Roosevelt, Bess Truman, Claire Booth Luce, Dorothy Schiff, Emily Post, and every other prominent American woman of the 1940s, Collier's Weekly contended that, with her patrimony, her own attainments, and her latest accolade, Sissy Patterson, no one calls her Eleanor, is probably the most powerful woman in America. It added, and perhaps the most hated. Her pedigree notwithstanding, Sissy Patterson, the everlasting problem child of American journalism, had come to publishing shortly before her 49th birthday in 1930 with almost no practical journalistic or editorial experience. The course of her early life might have been lifted from the pages of Henry James or Edith Wharton. Audacious and headstrong, over the objections of her family, she married Josef Gajiszki, a Polish count with connections to the Austro-Hungarian and Imperial Russian courts, as well as a history of incurring staggering debts and fathering illegitimate children. As predicted in the few cloudy forecasts that appeared among the otherwise glowing reports in the American press at the time of the wedding in 1904, the union ended unhappily. Sissy fled from her husband one night in the south of France, still bleeding from the beating he had given her after fewer than four years of marriage. It would take another fretful 18 months, as well as the intercession of President Taft and Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, before the Count would relinquish the couple's four-year-old daughter, whom he had kidnapped and hidden in the interim. Returning to the United States with her toddler and concluding the melodrama that readers on two continents had followed in fulsome press accounts for nearly two years, Countess Eleanor Gajishka found herself notorious and restless. After several false starts toward acting and writing fiction, she would be drawn irresistibly, like so many members of her family before her and after, to journalism. In 1930, Sissy Patterson became the only woman editor-in-chief of a major metropolitan daily newspaper when she took over William Randolph Hearst's ailing Washington Herald. Despite an almost total lack of journalistic experience, within 18 months, she made the Herald the leading morning paper in the nation's capital. By 1936, she had doubled the Herald's circulation. In 1937, she took over the other local Hearst paper, the Evening Washington Times, in 1939, she merged both into Washington's first round-the-clock daily, the Washington Times-Herald, which would hold an unassailable lead in the Washington market for the rest of her life. By 1945, the salacious, pugnacious, rapidly isolationist, picture-packed Times-Herald cleared more than a million dollars in profit yearly, and Sissy Patterson had made herself, as Collier's Weekly put it, probably the most powerful woman in America, and perhaps the most hated by making full use of her grandfather Medill's editorial motto. When your grandmother gets raped, put it on the front page. <laughs>